All right, everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Granger Defined. Today we have a very special guest in the form of Mayor Ron Bigelow. So I want to thank you for coming on, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. So now, whenever we have a guest come on to the show, we always want to get to know them before we dive into the more serious questions. And okay. we were talking a little bit before, and you say you're the mayor, the accountant, you have a serious demeanor. So we're going to try and get to know you a little bit so all of our viewers can see okay. who you are. So first, we prepared a list of kind of, I don't want to say funny questions, but get to know you questions is what we'll call them. Okay. So Very first, good. when you're at the zoo, what animal are you most excited to see? Well, I've never really had a favorite animal, but because my wife loves giraffes, I support her in that. So <laughs> okay, very I say good. I'll, I'll love giraffes more than others. So. Uh, that's, you know what? <laughs> that's a good tip. Everyone that's watching that's married, pay attention. Okay, so next question then. When you're at a restaurant, what's your favorite food to order? I guess what kind of restaurant are you at, and then what are you ordering from that restaurant? Oh, now that is tough because my favorite food is home-cooked meals. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And in fact... When I'm out, uh, you know, like working for the city, if I can, I avoid luncheon meetings because I don't like to eat out so much. But when I do, uh, I enjoy Mexican food because I lived in Latin America. Oh, okay. And then uh, probably Italian. Okay. Now, what part of Latin America were you living in? I uh, lived in Mexico. I moved down there with my family uh, to work. Uh, Interesting. Uh, in an office to do some training of a person that we had hired. And then I went down and did the same thing in Chile. Oh, wow. So, uh, great experience, for, especially for my kids. Sure, absolutely. I bet to get that an international experience. So you speak Spanish then as well? Yes. Wow, well, wonderful. Well, maybe we'll do something after in Spanish, right? Okay, we'll see. sure. <laughs> okay, so now you'd mentioned those home-cooked meals. Uh -huh. Is that usually now, are you doing the cooking or is it your wife? And my wife loves to cook, okay. and so uh, uh, she does a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, from her mother, she learned to prepare a lot of food, so uh, it's rare that we do package meals. Okay. Uh, she always likes to prepare them from as far as scratch as she can, That's except for maybe a cake or something. Sure, like as possible. Now, when you could ask her, say it's your birthday and she wants to make you a nice meal, what kind of meal do you ask for? Oh, yes. Uh, either meatloaf or... Uh, with, you know, like mashed potatoes, or perhaps, uh, you know, just uh, uh, some beef. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, type of thing that, sure. that's usually what we have. Well, there you have it. Mayor Bigelow's <laughs> as authentic as it gets. So now we're gonna transfer into kind of the more serious questions. Okay. Um, you're a newly elected, uh, excuse me, a newly elected mayor. What's your vision for West Valley City? Well, the key thing for West Valley, and one of the primary reasons I ran was uh, it's about our city and its neighborhoods. Sure. West Valley City, uh, you know, cities change over time. And it seemed like some of our neighborhoods were somewhat deteriorating, not looking as good. People were becoming less involved. So one of the challenges I've taken on is how to get our neighborhoods back to being something meaningful. In other words, if you live in a neighborhood, do you know your neighbors? You know, is the city taking care of the neighborhood? in the infrastructure. People will have to take care of the, uh, most of the things that happen there themselves. Sure. But the city needs to do its part and it's kind of, you know, money's tight so you kind of back off of taking care of the roads or the sidewalks. And uh, so my goal is over time to realign our budget such that we can put more emphasis on our neighborhoods. Wonderful. Now. Now, you've mentioned you want these neighborhoods to not deteriorate. What is your goal for involving Granger High School? Or I guess better said, how does Granger High School and its students and faculty and members of the school fit into that plan? Well, see, that's part of the challenge. Some people say, oh, well, we, you know, we're not adults. We're high school students. Sure. You know, we're, we're almost adults legally. Wait a minute. You're a member of the community. There is no difference between a high school student and any other member of the community or the mayor. We all live here. We're all participants. Now, we can participate in the community, give of ourselves, or not. Most people don't participate. So, you know, all they have to do is be a part of the community. That includes high school, but it also includes things outside of the school just as you do things outside of your home, you know, in your Absolutely. neighborhood. Helping your neighbors, knowing your neighbors. Uh, 
uh, simple things such as, you know, picking up garbage in the neighborhood. Whatever it might be, if you want to have a nice neighborhood, you invest in it. Do you work to enact that change? Okay, now, I guess using that question to jump into the next question, what do you see when you look at the students here at Grandeur High School? Is it potential? Is it the future? What are your ideas about that? It's interesting, as I have watched, uh, you know, there seem to be a small group of people who make communities happen and change them, either for the better or the worse. So most people will not participate in the community. Not that they're not good people, they just, you know, they say, hey, you know, I've, as long as the city pick us, picks up my garbage and I can call the fire sure. department if there's a fire, I'm happy. Then everything's okay, right? Yeah. But others say, I want to make things happen. I want to be involved. And so some, and we look to the students because it will be them. You know, who's going to take care of me in my old age? Well, it's not going to be me. You know, sure. I've, I've planned and took care of that. But still, who's going to run the community? Absolutely. Who's going to take care of the fire and the police? Who are going to keep our neighborhoods nice? Who are going to be the people who open up businesses? and keep it a vibrant and livable community. What's going to be the students in your high school? And now some of those will be five years from now, some ten years, maybe it'll be twenty years. I didn't get involved in politics uh, until I was in my forties. Wow. So uh, it just happens when it's appropriate for each individual. But the more they're involved, the greater difference they can make. So yes, they literally will be our community. Uh, you know, a number of years from now. Absolutely. Now, I, you know, I can feel the passion you have for this city, for the students, for this community. You know, that's been a key word that you said is community, mm -hmm. a group of individuals coming together. Why is it that you care so much and love West Valley City so much? Well, I've lived out here for a lot of years. Um, I graduated from Granger High School many years ago. Uh, I raised my family out here, and we enjoyed it. Uh, we could interact with our neighbors, and I've talked with a lot of people. Uh, I've gone through the city, walked through most of it, talking with people. People enjoy living here because it's comfortable, sure. because it's enjoyable to live here. Other communities, uh, just in my opinion, uh, they're enjoyable to live in, but not in this relaxed, informal atmosphere that we have. It makes it where you want to just be at home, be in your neighborhood, and enjoy it. And uh, that was always special to me. And I had opportunities to move. Uh, we actually did move once, but it was within the city. We okay. only moved just a few blocks. In fact, my whole neighborhood, uh, there were a number of families who wanted bigger homes. We were in smaller homes. And they started building bigger homes just a block away. And so we all many of us moved over there that to stay. Took that opportunity, absolutely. And that's what we found in West Valley. People say, uh, you know, a lot of developers want us to build small homes. And we say, well, we don't need them. We have a lot of those. But people want to move into a bigger home, but stay in West Valley. Sure. Because of this enjoyable atmosphere that we have out here. It's been a great place for families. Wonderful, a great place to live, to work, and, mm -hmm. you know, to form a membership in the community. Mm -hmm. Now, we give every, every individual that comes on and speaks with us this opportunity, um, and the opportunity is to answer this question. If you could give any message to the Granger community, and it could be as simple as look both ways before you cross the street or something a bit more profound, what message would you give to Granger and to West Valley City? I would say be involved, and that doesn't mean spending a whole bunch of time working. Be involved by knowing who represents you, any elected official, and interacting with them. Hold them accountable. Talk to them. Ask them questions. Uh, why are we spending money the way we are? Why are you doing this? So the key is be a participant. And by so doing, you'll make your elected officials better and your city better. I guess, I, I guess just a quick follow-up. I know I said that was the last question, but do you hold yourself accountable to those constituents and individuals that interact with you? Oh, absolutely. Actually, when I went around door-to-door -door talking to people, I, I would make notes, and I have a list of several pages of issues that I'm going to work on. 
Now, some of them are s very small, and maybe I can't do a thing about it, but I'm going to try. And the other thing, you know, I did campaign literature. Okay. And you make, you know, these commitments. And I didn't make a lot, but I made what I felt were some key ones, and I keep a copy of that in my office. And I've always done that, and I said, remember, this is what you said. This is what you need to follow up on. So that's what I do. Absolutely. Well, Mayor Bigelow, we appreciate you coming on. We just want to remind everyone that watch that is watching to follow us on Twitter, to like us on Facebook, um, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. But Mayor Bigelow, thanks again. A very authentic, hardworking individual. We appreciate your time. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs>